On today's episode, of course, we got the news and the notes. We got Ride or Die, a sensational segment of Trending or Ending. We highlight some players. Do we think that what's going on with them will continue or will they break out of a slump? The Thursday night matchup plus a very interesting discussion about baking a pie. Make sure you stay tuned. Don't miss a moment. Subscribe to this channel, like the video, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh! Welcome in. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Wednesday, September 28th. Jason Moore. Mike the Fantasy Hitman right. Whoa. I was a little late on my what up, so I cut Andy off. <laughs> it, was, it was very deep and aggressive, too. What up? Yeah, you're Man. not even wearing a backwards hat for that. What up? Yeah, what, it's part of who I am now. What B got in your bonnet? <laughs> I don't know. That's the that that's that a, a, a thing that people used to say in like the 1800s. Oh, great. Yeah. Let's, let's bring it back. <laughs> when, back I mean, let first me give you, you gotta, a con- gotta bring back bonnets. For, right, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the first, one. first step. <laughs> Good example like uh, used in a sentence would be like, in the midst of our Sunday matchup against one another, Jason had a B in his bonnet. Would that you, be? You're talking about the DraftKings lineup <laughs> where you lost and you get shamed oh, on Friday. Wow. Or oh, we've done, we've reached different stages of grief. Yeah. What is a bonnet? I was just going to say. <laughs> All I see in my head is a chef's hat. <laughs> Didn't <laughs> little Bo Peep have a bonnet on? Well, she had a sheep. Yeah. <laughs> she did have a bonnet. Thanks, Mike. What's a uh, bonnet? Is it a hat? No, it's like a it's a, it's a soft uh, hat with like I just said, a, chin a hat? strap, like no. a chin <laughs> strap. It's a soft hat, Mike. No, it's not like a traditional hat. It's a bonnet. Oh, uh, okay. But, it's the but, one that has the shield. Yeah, but it also goes down. Doesn't it come down and strap under your chin or no? Yeah. Like, a, like yeah. softly? So it's like a it's, it's a Maybe. big build hat? Yeah, big build hat with okay. a chin strap. So a, there it is. A big build hat, I can now see if you had a bee in one, it would be upsetting. That would be a oh, problem. Oh, yeah, because it could get loose in the back because there's some space. Like if I had a bee in my hat, it would be a bad time. Yeah, would it do much to you? I guess it would. I guess it would sting you. Uh, well, I mean, it probably would not sting me, but the the fear and terror. Yeah. <laughs> once I realized there was a bee up there, oh, would be uh, uh, surrounding your bulbous. I mean, it's yeah. That, there's a lot head. of surface area for it to to sting. I mean, it would. Everything would be ripped off, and I would just be screaming naked through the street. This is a fantasy football podcast. Welcome <laughs> in. Uh, we have ride or die on the show today. News and notes to talk about. Uh, some quarterbacks in question, trending or ending on the show, and some mailbags. So it's going to be a fun one, uh, assuming we don't stay on the bonnet topic. I'm looking into it. Um, but, Mike, yeah, look, maybe maybe we get the bonnet into the wheel of shame uh, rotation. Oh, there you go. Maybe we should figure that out with the B. We actually, after after having <laughs> with the beat, after having looked up the bonnet, the first thing I realized is that we have actually had that on the wheel of shame before. The bonnet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. A baby. The baby bonnet? Yeah, the baby bonnet. Oh, yeah. the ba- babies still do the bonnets. Maybe <laughs> not. All right. Uh, <laughs> FootClanGiveaway.com giving away some signed sports memorabilia. What am I talking about? Jalen Waddle, Jalen Hurts, DJ Moore, jerseys, autographed, authentic memorabilia, and then uh, a virtual studio tour. You can check that out. We're also live today, this yeah, afternoon, baby. on Spotify. So every Wednesday, uh, the party room. Back in action, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, completely free. Just go uh, grab the Spotify app. Or the Spotify Live app. Or the Spotify Live app if you want to participate and just tune in 6 p.m. Eastern to the show. Ride or Die, presented by Chevrolet. Ride or die, presented by Chevy. Last week, I actually managed to win one of these. 
So uh, two out of three. You guys each got one out of three. I think the reason we got stuck on the bonnet, now that I think about it, is because... It's, it's an interesting topic. Well, and, and we're, Brooks isn't here today. Yeah, so the, no. ju the judge isn't here. So when I glance to my left to Deucer's Alley, uh, I see, um, well, well, I see a, a reflection off the sculp. You saw sculp? the sculp. <laughs> Scalp of uh, Papa Josh. You saw a head that desperately needs a bonnet. <laughs> it would be better with a bonnet. Cover it up. Uh, the Borgogans here. And then there's, uh, you know, like our head producer for the day is Al Borland. And so I was probably in a spitballer's mood is all I'm saying. Oh, it's yeah. like the spitballer's podcast. We we might talk about if you want to hear bonnet talk for like 40, 50 minutes. Which I know a lot of you do. That's spitballers. But we get serious here. With, also, all jokes aside, this coming Monday. Oh, brother. You're going to want to listen to that spitballer's episode. It's a big one. Yeah. What do you think? You agree with that, Al? It's great. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, all right. Ride or die last week. Um Christian Kirk, 12 fantasy points. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike we, we stuck it. with Christian Kirk and won that one. Jason and I uh, went against Brady and Rodgers. We got that. And then Miles Sanders, 70 or more rushing yards. I can't believe he didn't hit it. I can. Well. Because yeah. I said die. But here we go. For this week, week four ride or die predictions. Kirk Cousins against New Orleans in London. Is he a top 12 quarterback so far this year? QB 12, QB 25. That was a primetime game. Mm -hmm. And QB 10. Uh oh. So I am going to die right if, off the bat. If these trends continue. Uh, it's not even the trend. It's just that the London game in Kirk's mind may be mistaken for a special event. And mm. I think anything primetime, um, island games, anywhere where Kirk is being watched by more people than he's comfortable with, the defense is pretty good in New Orleans. I'm gonna go die. I, I'm I'm coming along for that um, not ride because uh, I am going to <laughs> you're, also you're dying shotgun. <laughs> yes, I'm, di I'm dying shotgun. Uh, th this week there are a lot of other quarterbacks I don't necessarily love for fantasy because they've been inconsistent, like Russell Wilson. Yikes! Russell? But he's got a really good matchup, Marshall. and I could see him uh, sneaking in. You know, Brady hasn't been the best, but he gets Mike Evans back. He's against Kansas City. Could be a high over under. Even Jared Goff is, you know, at home against Seattle. So I think there's a lot of other quarterbacks that could push him down. So I will, uh, I will select die. Uh, I'm gonna ride what Kirk Cousins the, I'm I'm the bounce back for Justin Jefferson. I would imagine it will be real this week. You don't go. You don't have an elite superstar wide receiver have the worst game of his professional career and then not do something about it. I think that's fair. Kind of impressive that Kirk was QB 10 without Jefferson essentially last week. Jamal Williams, ride oh. or die as a top 10 running back without DeAndre Swift this week. He was the running back two last week, went 20 for 87 and two touchdowns, two targets. Takes on Seattle. The matchup's great. Uh, I'm going to let you guys go first. So the Detroit Lions have the second highest implied team total of the week. They're over under, at least what I'm seeing right now, is sitting at 49.5, putting in it's their favor by 4.5, putting them at 27 points. They should handle the game script against the Seahawks. I mean, the Seahawks, they're wily. You know, they they got some fight in them. This comes down to touchdowns. Can, can Jay Willie have another uh, another dose on the ground. I don't think he needs to, but he you, does have – he leads the NFL right now and carries inside the tent. So the, it, when they get in there, it's it's time for Jay Willie. Home favorites. I'm going against it, though. I'm going to die. <sighs> I was hoping, I, I, was hoping I could talk you into it because I was going to die. So. I, I, I love him. I, I think that he's a great well, they, play, but top all, 10's a real high line. Where Yeah, where do we want to move it? Let's move it to top 16. I will ride. Mike? I will, I will ride. Crap. Top 14. <laughs> all right. So top 14. What are you guys doing? Wait a minute. Why Why did we move it? Because oh, we were all I was going to I was going to ride too. Oh, all right. Just set set the line where you where you you die. Okay. I I will uh f f 15. Okay. I will ride. Okay. Top 15. Me and Jay riding together. All right. Okay. Thelma and Louise. Ride ride. With Jay Willie. There you go. And then <laughs> the uh, captain. Let's go with Rashad Bateman against Buffalo. Will he have at least 10 fantasy points in a half PPR? 12.9, 18.8, 4.9 the last three weeks. I believe this is, does Rashad Bateman score a touchdown? 
Maybe. I don't think it has to be score a touchdown, but with the injuries to the secondary in Buffalo, the total in this matchup, I think Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen are going to go back and forth. I will buy this. I, I, I think you could get to 10 without a touchdown, but, uh, you, you know, the yeah, easiest path will be a touchdown. I'm riding shotgun. All right. Uh, I will go. I'm going to go with die then. So you, you're really into 10 fantasy points catching two, four, and two receptions yeah, a I, week? It is a risk. Uh, it, it is a risk. His his uh, route participation has not been where you want it. He's not up in the 90s. He's in the 70s. Uh, but his actual value per target is great. He is oh, down the plays. field. Big play guy, and this matchup is wonderful. So I, I am going to stick with my man, Rashad Bateman. That was Ride or Die presented by Chevy Silverado. Learn more about Chevy Silverado at Chevy.com. News and notes from around the league presented by USAA Insurance. Well, we need to talk about some quarterback situations. Tua Tungavailoa. Questionable for week four against the Bengals. Um, looking at this situation earlier this morning with what we know, I think he will play. He was listed as limited yesterday. Uh, Mike McDaniel is equivocating. I think maybe some gamesmanship. I don't think it's a guarantee he's out there, but I, I believe he will play against the Bengals on Thursday night. Yeah, it seems like if if it's even possible, he's going to. So it would have to be a significant serious back injury that means he absolutely can't go. He's a gamer. I expect him to play, but and we'll talk about this game a little bit, you know, to, in a in a little bit on this episode breaking it down more. It's been a weird week for the Dolphins. So, we'll see how that turns out tomorrow night. Do you agree that uh you think he'll be out there? I think so. All right. Head coach Robert Sala announced that quarterback Zach Wilson has been medically clear, cleared and will start Sunday if there are no setbacks. Yay. Number two. Yay. That's his number. Oh, is it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, just not totally a coincidence. <laughs> well, there's, there was a void. Number two. There was a void on the Jets for a number two. Yeah, there was a number two void. <laughs> and... Um, Zach Wilson, please be good. Here, here's the thing. Please. Um, we liked the passing volume of Joe Flacco. There wasn't really other things to like about that experience over three weeks. So the question to me is not so much do I believe Zach Wilson is good or not, because I don't believe Joe Flacco is good. Let me just be clear. Joe Flacco was good for the receivers because he threw the ball so often. It's a, and it's catchable. And, uh, well, sure. According to Garrett Wilson. Yeah, but not catchable enough to win or score a lot of points. I don't care. So <laughs> all I'm saying is that the question to me is, do I believe Zach Wilson would throw the ball as much as Joe Flacco? And I pretty much think the answer to that is yes. I think they will have to. I think they will let him. I think he, you know, he's going to get outside the pocket, something Joe Flacco cannot do whatsoever. And uh, you have players, Elijah Moore, uh, Garrett Wilson, who, you know, their speed – is going to put them in a position where plays that are extended put them, you know, they're going to be open. So I think it's going to be 80, 90% of the passing volume of Joe Flacco. Well, and the, and the, the 80, 90% of the overall number might even be good for the wide receivers because I would imagine that the target share to the running backs goes down significantly going from Joe Flacco, who's a statue in the pocket and has his little check down machine. You know, we've seen 10 plus targets in multiple weeks to Brees Hall or uh, Michael Carter. So, he, you know, it's one of those, I can't find someone dump it off, whereas Zach Wilson, whether he should or shouldn't, will probably hold on to the ball a little longer, can evade pressure, roll out, and will will be looking more towards, or at least I would anticipate he would be looking more towards the wide receivers and even the tight end than he would be the, the dump-offs to the running back. All right, let's look here. Michael Gallup will get a bunch of work on practice. Is close to making his debut. I wouldn't. We're not going to bet on Michael Gallup's return, and you're not going to put him in your lineup until we see him return and have value. Those things may come conjoined with Dak Prescott's return in week five or six. But still worth stashing at this point. 
Brian Dable said Kadarius Tony and Wandale Robinson are getting closer to game action. That is great. Kadarius Tony has never been able to play football in the NFL. I mean, he is his slew of injuries is outlandish. It goes from head to toe and it's every game and whenever he hasn't been on the injury report, he ends up getting injured in those games. But he is a must stash. There's, he he is so important to this offense without Sterling Shepard. We, we've seen him on when he's on the field, when he's got the balls, the ball in his hands. <laughs> he <laughs> he's electric. So you know, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe that's the problem. Okay. Maybe that's why he's getting injured. <laughs> <laughs> Playing around with okay. the <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Um. Look, I, I, I don't necessarily think he's important to the offense. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. Um, the lights are still going. The lights are freaking <laughs> out over here. Oh, oh the oh, lights are ooh. We're in the dark. <laughs> that was great. Um, here's what I think. I, I think the team won't have them back this week. I think if you're in DFS or desperation zone, Richie James will get a ton of work. Um, there seems to be a meritocracy situation going on with the wide receiver room. And so uh, uh, Tony is the most explosive. He's probably the only one with any ceiling, any real fantasy <laughs> value other than him and Wandale probably. But I don't know if he gets the opportunity this year. I don't know if the way that they're playing, the way that he's coaching, they like David Sills. Um, Why? I know. And and Kenny Galladay, the frustration, uh, he's going to have opportunities too. I'm just... Wandale's probably the only one that I'm like. I, I tried to get him yesterday. Did you? I tried to pick him up just on the – well, my team is it tried to collect all the rookie wide receivers. Ah, uh, yes. So yes. it was important for my collection. Um, that is missing that set. badge. No, I, I – Yeah, I, I'm trying I, to get the completion. <laughs> yeah. While we disagree on Kadarius Tony, I agree with you on Wandale Robinson. Those are the two guys to me that I would if, – if you want to take a shot at having some kind of good fantasy relevant player going forward it's one of those two it's not going to be Kenny Galladay no matter the opportunity it will never be Sills no matter the opportunity and it won't be Richard James I mean not not that they won't have one game with you know ooh seven for 74 and maybe a touchdown but they, that's they just don't have the talent to get it done whereas Wandale and Kadarius both if they are on the field not only are they talented but they're necessary um I think that Rich James will have a week this week against Chicago. Possible. London game, Jameis Winston was not at practice today. Uh, Dennis Allen says he thinks he will practice tomorrow. Uh, we saw Taysom Hill getting some QB reps at practice behind Andy Dalton. And Michael Thomas not seen at practice with the toe injury. Something to monitor because, you know, Landry might make it back. Man. It's not certain that Thomas will make it back. And then, oh, boy. If Michael Thomas misses a, a game already, I know after missing what essentially what two years, is that's brutal. Olave. Oh, okay, okay. Andy Dalton can get the ball to Olave. Olave is, I'm very excited. Let's put it sure. that way. I think you're you're set up to have kind of a consistency from a rookie wide receiver very early in the year. What double digit targets two consecutive weeks? I believe Correct. so. Yeah, delicious. And his are high value. This ain't no Hollywood Brown 14 for 140. Yeah, he's going downfield. But I do think Jameis is pretty necessary for the um, chuck it and pray philosophy that he you know, enjoys. Miles Garrett, the uh, car accident, shoulder sprain, strained bicep, lacerations. Cleveland has not looked good on defense. They made basically zero plays, zero sacks interceptions fumbles in this last week against Pittsburgh until the until Pittsburgh threw the ball backwards into the end zone on the final play of the game mm -hmm. against Jason mm -hmm. uh, so Marcus Mariota was Mike stream yesterday Cleveland if they don't have Miles Garrett and they don't get Jadavius Clowney back the pressure rates are already terrible they don't look good they've had defensive breakdowns in the secondary Kyle Pitts could take advantage so um, I I think you avoid this defense this week if Miles Garrett's not out there I agree probably even if he is um, and then there are some weather concerns with the impact of Hurricane Ian. Uh, Tampa Bay is relocating their football operations to Miami-Dade County. No changes to the game yet, but that could happen, which means that you could have a shuffling of game times and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Kyle, you got anything for us? That's it for now. Are you wearing a Red Sox cap? I like socks. Hmm. 
But yeah, it's the Red Sox. You like That's, the White Sox? I just I, I don't know how far down this rabbit hole to go, Mike, but he, he's a Braves fan. Ah, uh, my interest is peaked. And yet you you appreciate the Sox logo. My favorite baseball player is Nomar Garcia Parra. Red okay. Sox. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can we but stop how do your this br- baseball talk? <laughs> How do you, how does your your like fellow Braves fans how would they appreciate you wearing the the socks? They cap? would not. He went to Georgia Tech. He's, he, come on, I mean, we could talk baseball, Andy. Keep okay. going, man. If we All right. To. Jason would would never allow that. I'm out of here. Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. Um, Jason's favorite baseball player. I don't know if you knew this. Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth. That Jason's is, favorite baseball player. I was wondering who. You were going to say that I knew, <laughs> and I do know him. You I mean, do know. That one time like where he pointed, yeah, that he, was my favorite of all, all the times. your favorite time. That's and where the second, home run's going. Who's your second favorite? It was um, that one guy? Mickey Mantle. Mick- <laughs> 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 all right, quick break, and then we're back with another segment. At some point in time, when we don't have such a jam-packed show and we can focus on baseball, Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we should like play a game where Kyle names some pretty famous players, uh-huh. and you decide if they were baseball players or not. I, I genuinely like, guess the sport I of this sta- player. I started wondering to myself: Could I <laughs> name twenty players? Yeah. All time historical. Yeah, you could get to twenty. You think? Yeah, get to I've- three though. Right now. No, if you well, said, I mean, my God, I got to start with two. Mickey Mantle, Babe Ruth. Yeah, get to three. Uh, Randy Johnson. Okay. Yeah, so right, we you, did it. But if you said twenty players playing right now, oh, that's a definite. Note. I would not be able to. Do I that. don't know if I can get to twenty. We'll find out after the show. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on. Trending or ending. All right, uh, these. Well, these are going to be tough. Mm-hmm. Looking at players uh, with essentially a few get good or bad games in a row, what do we believe their future holds? Let's begin with the um, one of the more difficult players right now in fantasy football, Austin Eckler. So he is the only running back right now with 20-plus carries that does not have a single gain of 10-plus rushing yards. Um, 28th. In week one at the running back position, that is uh, also not in the top five, in case you were curious where he got drafted versus the 28 finish. Sure. Number nine in week two because running back scoring was pathetic. Yeah, with with 13.9 half point scoring. That's... And then back to 26 points in week three, they just lost their left tackle, Rashawn Slater. We think they'll get their center back. We don't know for sure. And – Shockingly, Eckler is not just is it's not just a case of give him the ball more, right? Like Mike has been making this Ezekiel Elliott case for a while, like just give him the ball because I, when he when he gets it, he's running for like five or six a game. Yeah. But Eckler, it's like two and a half. Yeah, he's thirty fifth out of thirty six qualifying running backs in rushing yards below expectation. There's a reason why you see more Sony Michelle out there and Josh Kelly of late, and um. Whether we think that's valid or not, right now, Eckler is not effective. So, you know, Austin Eckler goes to almost effective at this point oh, in time. No. And oh, I don't want... Oh, almost effective. I don't oh, no. want... Brutal. I don't want to say that because he's a good friend of the show. He is. But, but he would, uh, I'm sure he would be the first to admit it. Yeah, and, and he, uh, you know, we know the talent, right? We've seen this for longer than this three-game stretch for the whole time he's been in the NFL. So... Trending or ending Austin Eckler's current decline? Uh, I will jump in because I do think that this is a trend that will continue. I think that the the high end top, like what you drafted for Austin Eckler, what we all drafted, I don't think is going to happen the, because the receptions are still there. It's not like everything has just gone poof for Austin Eckler. Four receptions week one, nine, eight. Like, like he's putting up nine and eight catches and still, I mean, yeah, we said he finished in the top 10, but he had eight receptions and finished with under 10 fantasy points and a half point for catching the ball. He finished with under 10 points. It's like, if you, 
if you take the the efficiency away on the on the ground, if you take the goal line opportunities away, he this is like third down running back scat back production. But he he's not only playing on the third down, but that's all you're getting from him right now. Wow. And I I think it I think it gets a little bit better as the offensive line can can heal up a little bit. But that high end, I I do believe that it is gone, especially with the platoon of three running backs, not just two. The receiving efficiency, which you left out, is also bad. His yards per He catch. is currently, of all qualifying running backs, not only last in yards per carry, but also last in yards per completion. He has not looked like he has looked over the last couple of years. In addition to that, so far this season, he has yet to crack 60% snaps in a game. Last year, there were four total games he did not hit that number. Four on the 17-game uh, the season. We are in week three, and he has three of them so far. So he's on the field less. He's less efficient in the running game. He's less efficient in the receiving game. And to me, we're going to talk about another player who is very similar in the sense that is highly drafted running back off to a bad start. One of these guys has passed my eyeball test, and one of these guys has worried my eyeball test, and Austin Eckler <laughs> has worried my eyeball test. He, he's getting a W right now on the test for worried. <laughs> it's like for win? <laughs> well, and, and I think you guys summarized the case for, you know, trending in this bad direction. I should add some other things you've observed on the field. You would think he'd take advantage of no Keenan Allen for two and a half games. Hasn't done it. Gerald Everett seems to be involved in the offense. Josh Palmer, larger target share over time. DeAndre Carter getting involved. So Eckler has been, you know, last week, if you don't have garbage time 38 to 10 chargers, this is a different story. This is a not even a top 40 running back. So um, unfortunately, it does seem like Mike's summation of if you don't give him the goal line, Toast. And you take away the top end. Doesn't mean he's not going to ever score um, and not do anything. It's just adjusted opinions of him. And then, like, would you go, you know, what tier do you move him for? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. just real quick, t because I don't want to paint the wrong idea. I think that he has lost a step, and he's lost involvement, and he's lost goal line, but that does not mean he's trash for fantasy. This is a guy who, instead of being the running back three for fantasy, is probably more going to be like the running back 15 for fantasy, which is fine. That's, that's, that's good if that's what you expect or that's what you're building around. You just can't see this involvement and this efficiency being that level. So now the next step is, so so where do you put him? Where where does he cycle in? Who would you move him for? The name that I like the most that I I, I think you can get the trade for uh, is moving Austin Eckler for Leonard Fournette. Uh, Leonard Fournette, his, his efficiency has been poor. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense has been dreadful, like dreadfully bad. But they're not going to stay that way. You had a game where Mike Evans was suspended. You have Chris Godwin, who's going to be back. Uh, it's it sounds like maybe in two weeks or so, but like it's sooner rather than later. And this offense will get going. And I think you could get and, that trade done in ninety nine out of hundred leagues. Yes, and that's because the work volume is still there for Leonard Fournette. Once the offense turns things around and gets and they start to get clicking. Touchdown opportunities are going to go way up for Fournette. Reception opportunities are going to go up. Uh, I like rest of season rankings. I prefer, I, I prefer Big Lenny, oh, and I would make that trade if I could get it done. It's that's that's it's really dangerous. tough because you know if I had to bet on which offense turns it around completely because both both the Chargers and the Buccaneers have sputtered for the for the expectations. And if I said, well, which one definitely is going to be, you know, a, a, a top six offense um, the second half of the season, I would still choose the Chargers over the wow, Buccaneers. Wow, really? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the vibes in Tampa Bay, Brady's age, the offensive line that isn't coming back, um, I, I just have more trust in Herbert and the pieces there uh, than I do in, in Tampa Bay. Javante Williams. Would you rather have Javante or Austin Eckler? Oh gosh. Uh, when you talk about snap percentages, yeah, yeah, and I, you break that down, which guy do you think? I think I would take the younger 
Yeah. Guy like J- Javante has juice and Austin Jason Eckler is Jason is shaking his head because he's um, you're you're he, one of you're one of the fantasy community. I our, mean you, you main, are living Yep, our main Eckler nightmare. experience. Le- league of record. Uh I have Austin Eckler and it's been a part of my one and two start. Looks great on paper and hasn't been panning out. What about Najee? Would you rather have Najee Harris, another fellow inefficient runner, but he gets everything? Probably he will get the goal line. I think I would. St- I'd still take Eckler over Najee. I'd take Najee. So would you take? Okay, I mean, we're talking Eckler, but would you go Najee or Fournette? I take uh, Fournette. Okay. I think you're right about that offense. I think if you're going to buy pieces of Tampa Bay right now, you're going to those are going to pay dividends in a few weeks. Um, uh, the last name I would throw out there, he's currently injured. I think you could probably get a trade because of the fear of the shoulder. But what about Dalvin Cook? Oh, you're not getting that done. You don't think a no. Dalvin Cook manager no. who's worried about losing Dalvin Cook? No, this go week? send that offer and see what happens. Really? No, I don't think that could get done. I'll bet in a lot of your leagues you could get okay. Dalvin, it, Dalvin Cook. Go ahead. Give that a try because that would be a home run. But if I had Dalvin Cook, I would, I'd spit in your face if you tried to give me Eckler. And that would be a really kind of reasonable response yeah. in a fantasy league. Well, let's see if I get some spit in my face. Christian Kirk. If you get Dalvin right now for Eckler, I'm going to be so upset. I will be upset. Christian Kirk, uh, wide receiver 19, 7, and 13, which puts him at number six on the year. 25.5% target share, leads the NFL in slot receiving yards. Uh, He never leaves the field, even on two wide receiver sets. Just... uh, it's just been great so far for Christian Kirk. The money invested has translated. Like, this is the case of they spent the money and it translated into right. a game plan. And so it doesn't always work that way, <clears throat> Marquez. Um, but Christian Kirk got a big bag. He's delivered on the promise. He keeps getting into the end zone. He's used in the red zone. Three red zone touchdowns on seven red zone targets. We don't think Christian Kirk's putting up 17 touchdowns, though. 17 18 touchdowns. No. So um is this an is this a trending situation where you're still buying and trading for Christian Kirk or is this an ending situation where you're cashing in and seeing if you can turn him into something more special like I don't know Debo Samuel. Oh man. Uh we'll get to that idea in a second but just the player Christian Kirk to me this is a trend. He's he was a good wide receiver in Arizona. Uh, he, like, th- there's in the past couple of years, there have been questions like, "Well, is Kirk really? Can he? Can he be a special player? Is he really that good?" And it seemed like for Arizona, the answer was no. But now we have more. Like, you have more information about Arizona without Christian Kirk, and their offense is bad. Like, it's legit bad. It was was Kirk being held back by the environment? Was he being held back by the Cliff Kingsbury offense? I think that I think that might be true. Meanwhile, now over in Jacksonville, what Peterson has brought to the table for the Jags is working. Trevor Lawrence, that I mean, the panic of Trevor Lawrence after year one, like the first overall pick, looked like he was not even close to a starting quarterback. Like he's supposed to be the the future of the quarterback position for a franchise. And he looked like he should be on the bench. He looks infinitely better this year. I mean, shocker. You get Urban Meyer out of there and you get an actual competent offense of mine end, things turn around. And on top of that, like Zay Jones is a sneaky good wide receiver. This is Kirk doesn't have to carry the offense as just well, he's the alpha and no one else on the team is good. No, Zay Jones is sneaky good. Marv Marvin Jones still has ability to to make highlight catches every once in a while so I, I think that this team is they're going in the right direction and with Kirk's like involvement non-stop route running getting that target share Trevor Lawrence loves him he passed a huge test here against the Los Angeles Chargers he's got another big one against the, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles but I think that Christian Kirk is the real deal and is going to be uh, at least a top 20 wide receiver moving forward. So one thing that stands out from what you said, Mike, is that if he struggles this week against the great Philadelphia secondary, that would be maybe a, a buy opportunity oh, I for Christian in, Kirk. Yes. Because maybe somebody will believe the shoe is dropped. What about Mike Evans? Would you rather have Mike Evans or Christian Kirk rest of the season? Mike Evans. 
Okay. I, I, I don't think so. Right now, Christian Kirk is is the wide receiver six and half PPR scoring. I don't think he stays there. It's not trending as a top six guy, but is he a top fifteen wide receiver? Like uh, uh, T uh, Higgins. I'll give me T Higgins. Yeah, I'll go Higgins. Okay. I think I've got him a, a behind a, you know those top. 15 not ready guys. to crown him. No, but I do think he's consistent. I think that this is really a question of is Trevor Lawrence trending or ending? I think he's trending. Um, so I'm in on Kirk, but I'm in on Kirk as a wide receiver too. I don't think his upside is that could this guy be a top six fantasy wide receiver at the end of the season, whereas all those other guys, the T. Higgins, Mike Evans, those type of players, they still have, I think, a, a higher ceiling than just being an awesome wide receiver too. I, I think he could end up in the top 10 at the end of the year, but it won't be with the kinds of plays you're talking about from Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. It will right. be with like a double digit floor of just 10 consistent. points every week, just because, you know, this is not a prolific defense. He's too integral. He's on the field all the time. Yeah. Um, uh, look at, looking at the schedule here, the, again, the tough test against Philadelphia, but then it's Houston, Indianapolis, the giants. Like, I mean, if, if he does struggle this weekend, I would be, in there in a minute trying to trade for him Debo Samuel I brought him up a minute ago oh man Christian Kirk or Debo Samuel Debo okay that's my answer too yeah I'll still however with Debo but that's we're gonna do trending or ending with Debo right now because <laughs> he is uh he never had three mediocre games in a row last year when he was the number two overall fantasy wide receiver he's at 27 right now 29 25 38 is that right Ten point four points last week was thirty eight at the wide receiver position. Yeah, a bunch of people clumped together. I mean, he's been double digits for three straight weeks. He just hasn't had those touchdowns that we had last year. That's what I was going to bring up. Debo has not been bad at all. I mean, you, yeah, you want more than ten half PPR points in a game, especially from someone you drafted highly. But it's kind of like uh, Christian McCaffrey right now. You were you're wanting these thirty point games. You're wanting these giant blow up games and you feel like Christian McCaffrey's been bad because you drafted him number one or number two he has not been bad no he's, he's been, been solid yes. he just hasn't been spectacular that's the same with Debo if someone is down on Debo and they feel like man this isn't what I was hoping I was drafting I, I think that their expectations are out of whack for someone who has yet to you know have fewer than 10 fantasy points in, in a week and still has blow up uh, potential. Plus, Jimmy Garoppolo, obviously they 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 had tumult at the quarterback position. And yeah, he was the quarterback last year, and they should be able to just you know snap their fingers, we believe, and change the system back, and everything's hunky dory. But they he, they haven't been practicing with him. They didn't right. have time with him. I think it gets better, not worse, as Jimmy G continues to play and the season goes on. And obviously, everything Debo did last year was with Jimmy G. So I am not. Uh, you know, I, I would say ending with Debo Samuel in the sense that people think the trend is he's been bad. Debo or Amon Ra rest of the season? Oh, Amon Ra. Oh, oh, man. That one's not fair. Yeah, I think it's got to be Amon Ra. Amon Ra. I'll take Debo. I'll take Debo there. How? So, okay, we brought his name up. Are we believers that Amon Ra is, is, has ascended to a top 10? Wide receiver? Yes. That's where I'm at. Yeah, but I think Debo's better. Fair. They're and both I, top ten. And I do think, I mean, look, we all like Elijah Moore, but when Jamison Williams does return, I don't care if it's week four, eight, whatever, the long-term view of Amon Ra is going to take a small adjustment when you have a physical freak that's a top 12 pick in the NFL draft. So so it doesn't mean that he's a, bit, a perennial top ten. I don't think so. Uh, this year, certainly in in the range of outcomes, yeah. That's that's where I'm at. Sure. Okay. All right, let's move on. Thursday night breakdown. The Miami Dolphins at three and zero take on the Cincinnati Bengals at one and two. Shout out to Rich Eisen, friend of the show, who brought up the incredible irony right now that. I mean, I don't know if you guys have realized this, but the two undefeated teams in the NFL right now are the Miami Dolphins and the Philadelphia Eagles. Huh, what did they do? And these <laughs> these are the these are the two teams that their quarterbacks played for the same the same roster. Jalen Hurts benched at halftime, Tua comes in at halftime, 
wins the national championship. And so then Jalen Hurts transfers and, and the rest is history. But it's just uh, this idea that if they could somehow face each other in the Super Bowl, if you could have these two that shared a, a quarterback room in Alabama face off against one another, oh, the validation man. of both, right? Both needed it. Both needed validation at the NFL level to have believers uh, or, you know, for people to believe in both of these guys. Not, nobody's believed in either of them, really. Um, they are now. So, and both got a prolific wide receiver in the that's, offseason. That's where I was going to go. It, it, the, the quarterbacks deserve a, a ton of praise for what they've done, but it is the NFL is a passing league. Add a true number one to your team, and things just get better. I mean, we're now we're on a very hot streak of this. Uh, Stephon Diggs goes to Buffalo. Josh Allen, yes, he put in the work and he became better. But I'm saying like those things happened at the exact same time DeAndre, for a reason. DeAndre Hopkins, yes. with and without DeAndre Hopkins, Kyler has been great and decent. Drafting yes. of Jamar Chase in Cincinnati. Yep. Which is, I mean, it's not a trade, but it's the same same story. Prolific pass catcher. Yeah. The get number one wide receivers. That being said um i'm pretty sure i've not vetted this kyle you can vet this but i'm pretty sure that uh kansas city and green bay the two teams that let them go right. are probably higher super bowl favorites um than than the dolphins and they, the they may right be now. but one of those teams just got embarrassed by the indianapolis colts <laughs> well and it, it's fair to say that um you know who would you rather start in fantasy Oh, sure. You want to start Jalen Hurts or you want to start Patrick Mahomes? You want to start Jalen Hurts or you want to start oh, wow. Aaron Rodgers? Yeah. Well, it's Jalen Hurts for me. I think it's Jalen Hurts it. over both of those yeah, players right now. Um, here's an interesting thing with the Dolphins and the Bengals. We have to remember that these are human beings who have uh, emotional highs and lows. They are coming off of an unbelievably emotional victory that they – really should not have won just on paper. They got outgained, outtouched the time of possession, everything. But they come away with a divisional win. They are coming off of that high. And then with the weather going on and everything in the, the Miami area, they had to travel early. So they have all, they've got a, a quarterback who they're not sure if he with can play problem. with the back problem in Tua, coming off of this victory, traveling early to Cincinnati to make sure that they can – play tomorrow night no very little practice this just seems like a like I love the Dolphins going forward I don't want to take anything away from the Dolphins but if they have a bad outing I'm not going to be surprised in this matchup the DraftKings Sportsbook line is Cincinnati minus four the over under is 47 I have Cincinnati winning this game I do as well we did our picks this morning um some of the reasons you just illustrated and and Miami look they had to come back from 20 they had to have a 28 to 3 uh, fourth quarter to beat Baltimore. Uh, they survived a uh, a, a butt punt uh, <laughs> oh, a, a against man. against Buffalo. The butt punt is not getting nearly enough media coverage. The butt punt would be overwhelming the media if they had if lost, they had the, lost game the game at the yeah. end and Josh Allen had been able to make that throw on fourth down. But the butt punt yeah. was spectacular. I mean, that guy got his butt kicked. <laughs> By a <laughs> with ball. A, with a ball. Like, yeah. I have we seen that before? A butt punt? I don't. Not to my knowledge. Okay. Not a not a butt punt of such consequence. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. It was a butt punt into a safety. Right. Yeah. That's right. Because it went right off that dude's derriere. Right. Out of the over the derriere. <laughs> yeah. It was not good. <laughs> so Miami at three and zero take on the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, you know, last week, I wouldn't say that I was I was really impressed with Cincinnati. Uh, they certainly took care of business against the Jets. You saw Tyler Boyd have one of his big games. T. Higgins knocked out for a brief amount of time. But when you have elite weapons, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Joe Mixon, you have you you just kind of have bullets in the gun at all times. And so from a fantasy perspective, you know, the Dolphins this year, they had to have a 28-3 to comeback in the fourth because they were giving up a lot of points to Lamar and company, Cincinnati at home. I'm not intimidated to play any of these players, including Joe Burrow. Yeah, I, sure. I would agree. I think Joe Burrow is a good play this week. Um, they're they're at home in a, a very publicized matchup. I, I think all of these studs, 
and I would include Joe Burrow in that conversation, are in your lineup from the Cincinnati side. I would not chase Tyler Boyd's big production. If you didn't see the play, he had a nice, um, you know, kind of kind of a, a deep catch across the middle, and the Jets thought, let's try to tackle him without arms, and they just <laughs> – they just ran into him, and he bounced off, and then he ran in for a touchdown. So I would not chase that, but the other three guys, certainly. So you wouldn't chase Boyd. You would chase <laughs> Jamar. And, and you would you chase Chase, chase. Yeah. Edmonds, two touchdowns with nothing else last week. I would chase a trade of Chase Edmonds to somebody else's team. I'll be trying to cash in on those two touchdowns real quick because you're like, running out of time. Would you trade Chase for Devin Singletary? Oh, that is an interesting question. Because I think you, you could I get would. that one accepted. Yeah, so I, I think I, I bet on the volume actually returning. Uh, yeah, it's tough because Devin Singletary's volume could go away, but right now Chase Edmonds' volume is away. So yes. <laughs> go ahead and take the better <laughs> offense. I, I I think that's a really fair trade you could get done that will probably give you a a more solid baseline. Chase Edmonds, just to highlight what happened here against Buffalo. A 5% target share, which week one he had 13%. 40% of the running back attempts. Yeah, I mean, it, snaps, utilization. 44% of the snaps. Everything has gone down every single week. Snaps, utilization in the passing game, utilization in the running game. All three were most or slightly ahead. It, it wasn't guess, like... Slightly higher running back attempts. It, it wasn't that um, Mostert dominated and, and Chase Edmonds was just the, an afterthought. They're like 55-45, and that's just not what we need for fantasy. We need one of these guys to be the clear uh, guy in the in the lead. And so in the meantime, I don't think you can really chase either Dolphins running back. I certainly would be trying to capitalize on the trade or holding Chase Edmonds because, uh, and we don't ever wish this into existence, but the older Raheem Mostert with the incredible sure. plethora of missing games, I would imagine – at some point this season, that's going to happen. And in that situation, we have seen good utilization for Chase Edmonds. It's funny how the, the utilization going down for Chase doesn't translate to a recommendation to go trade for Raheem Mostert. Because his is not like way up. Yeah, he's not dominating the touches. He's just slightly ahead. Tyreek, Jalen Waddle, go ahead. It was 10 opportunities. No, I know. For I'm, Mostert. I'm not making the case that you should be. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying it's just... An interesting situation where it almost feels like the like the pie's getting smaller with the lack of utilization yeah, with Chase. They put it in the dryer. Um <laughs> too long, too long in the dryer. You gotta bring it out when it's still a little damp, yeah. otherwise could it's you, gonna shrink. Could you warm food up in a dryer? Of course yeah, you could. You could. It gets hot in there. If you had if you had like uh, uh something that could be stable on it, not going around and around. Yeah, you just like put a the gyro. Shoe rack, oh, the shoe rack yeah, if there. you put a shoe rack in a dryer, you could dry a pie in there. Yeah. The shoe rack. What does the shoe rack do? There's a a lot of dryers have like a little uh, table that you could put in there to, to specifically to dry shoes. So your shoes don't go clickety clonk. Could you fit a clunk. full? Can you put a full pie in there? Yeah, of yeah, course. You could put a pie. I'm gonna yeah. try to heat a pie in my dryer. I don't know how long it would take. How hot does a dryer get? Really What'd you hot, say there, man. Jay? <laughs> I'm gonna try to heat a pie in your dryer. Yeah. All right. This is how Jason burns his house down. <laughs> But it's gonna smell delicious. <laughs> oh my gosh! No, the firemen will be appreciative. Yeah, like, of the aroma. Like, was, was that blueberry? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you have won the award for the first and only time I've ever seen someone burn their house by heating a pie in the <laughs> in the dryer. Um. Well, they you know we can most talk. dryers can get around 125 to 135. You're just degrees talking Fahrenheit. about a heat up. We're not yeah. cooking the pie. Yeah, no, you're, yeah. Not, you're not cooking. I'm not you putting wanna, dough in there. Because, you know, the microwave, heating up in the microwave is just never the same as, like, if you get the it's oven hot. If you get the oven hot, that's a better situation. Now, based on that temperature, I feel like I could make some good jerky in there. Oh. At 125? The, the drips would be a problem. But. Yeah. Well, we, you can work it out. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure this out. Nobody's ever really mixed laundry and food the way that you seem to want I kinda to. I kind of mix everything with food. Um, so. All right, last topic. Is that, that was all just um, better topic to talk about than sitting Tyreek or Jalen Waddle. You play them both. Yes. Tua, though, final conversation here. Tua Tungavailoa, 9-1 and one over his last 10 starts. Uh, he's got the highest completion percentage of 15-plus yard pass plays in the NFL, according to a uh, friend of the show, J.J. Zacharyson. Zacharyson. What did I say? <laughs> Zacharyson. the Raya. He hmm. well, gets that. It happens. Uh, Tua or Used Ky to be a friend of the show. <laughs> 
Sorry. <laughs> no. Goodness gracious. Uh, spell your name better. Uh, Tua or <laughs> Kyler at Carolina? If I've got Kyler, I don't I don't love the matchup and I'm oh, not like being a Kyler, but if I've if I have a a good enough quarterback like that, I'm going to take the injury risk yep. out and yep. I'll I'll play Kyler. I I'm with you. Same with believe it or not even Russ against Las Vegas. I'm not going to mess with the back of Tua and the fact that I could there would be nothing worse than starting your week Thursday night, Tua, one quarter of football, yeah, and Teddy Bridgewater on the and, field. And while the the Bengals haven't played a who's who so far obviously they, they played Dallas week one that was a pretty good matchup and their defense looked great um Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle can take uh, you know any ball to the house on any team so you could certainly have Tua uh have a decent game but this isn't a great matchup the Bengals defense is solid so the combination of being Thursday night with the bad back uh, with a bad matchup, yeah, I would I would look elsewhere if you can. Tua or stream Jared Goff. Who Goff may... is at home against Seattle. We don't know the status of Amon Ra right now, so you'd have to make that decision before knowing. I would go to a because of Amon Ra and and Swift. Uh, I, okay. I I was really um, I liked the matchup for Goff, but no, not knowing the health of the other pieces in uh, Detroit, I'd go to. <sighs> Papa Josh, are you on the microphone today? Yes, sir. You ever cooked a pie in a in a dryer? No. I mean, who amongst uh, us? <laughs> who amongst <laughs> us hasn't at least thought about it? Inquired of such things. <laughs> Desperate times, man. I think that the one time I would consider it is if the oven is like occupied, right? And you really need it's a it's quick. It's really like to warm some bread or something. But a pie is delicious. What's so. more embarrassing? Would it Bert? become a pyre? Would the dryer? Oh, the dryer would become a pyre. That's just no, what I, that's what oh, I use no, to eat my pies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm, okay. um, I liked it. Thanks. But uh, what's more embarrassing, burning your house down because you tried to use your dryer to heat up a pie? Okay. Or serving cold pie? Yeah, that's obvious. Right. Ooh. Right. There is some good cold pie though. It's probably probably time to sign off. <laughs> all right, that is it for the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. All the rankings, the start sit tool, all the premium tools from jointhefoot.com. You can find them on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Talk to you later. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.